Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Busy Moms Fitness, Nutrition, Mindset, and Accountability Community. I am really excited for today's short training and some big announcements that are coming your way here in September. So for those of you who may be new to this group, because remember, we do one free training the first Thursday of each month. There's three other weeks where people can jump in and not really know what's happening. So if you want to watch any of our previous trainings, make sure to click that guide section up at the top inside the Facebook group. Once you click that guide section, you can see all of our trainings. If you are someone who is like, well, why are you going live? We go live every month to kind of build that guide section and also give you a chance to interact. So sometimes I give you guys the Zoom link and you can actually jump in the Zoom room with us. Other times I just stream directly into Facebook and you can keep, you can ask questions, you can comment, you can do anything in the comments as I'm going live or as you're watching the replay. So I am Morgan Ekovich. I am the one who runs this community and you've probably seen me post a lot. You've also probably seen a woman named Denise post a lot. She does a lot of my back end work. So if you ever see anything posted by Denise or myself, make sure you keep an eye out for it, check it out, read it, watch it, whatever that is. So I am passionate about helping busy moms and women create the sustainable health and wellness habits, help create sustainable health and wellness habits that actually fit your life, not the other way around. So often we try to mold our lives to these things that we read or we see when really we should be taking bits and pieces from that information and turning it into our own based on our lifestyle. So I have a passion for helping women with that. Today's topic is about unlocking your wellness potential. And we're going to talk about the pillars inside this group and inside something new that I am launching starting next Thursday. So make sure you keep listening. Before we get too far in, I want you to let me know in the comments. If you are watching live, drop hashtag live in the comments and let us know who you are and where you're from. If you're watching the replay, whether it's in Facebook or in YouTube, drop hashtag replay. Let us know who you are and where you're from as well. So did you know that 80% of people who set goals at the start of the year give up by February? That's crazy to me. That means that only 20% of people actually follow through. That doesn't mean, though, that we have to wait till the new year because we're in September now, and you're probably thinking, yep, I was one of those 80 people. Well, I'll just wait till the new year. No, you do not have to wait till the new year to reset those goals, to be, to start making progress, to start making changes. We can start doing that now. And what I want you to take away from today is I want you to listen, I want you to follow along, and if and at the end, I want you to let me know in the comments that one thing from today's call that you're going to start doing to implement to finish out this year strong. And by doing that now, it's going to make setting yourself up for success in the new year even easier. So before we get into the nitty gritty, let's talk about what it means to unlock your wellness potential. This isn't about perfection. It's about mindset and reality. We often get caught up in the all or nothing mentality. Oh, I can't go for the 30 minute walk. I just won't do any of it. Oh, I can't eat healthy all day long. I just won't do any of it. Or, oh, I can't have my two servings of vegetables. So I won't do any of them. We are thinking too perfectly. We, we like to have things look a certain way, but that's not, that's not how we should be thinking about our health and wellness. We want to make sure that we are doing as much as we can and doing as best as we can with what we have. And one of the biggest challenges that we face as busy women is feeling like we don't have enough time or energy to focus on ourselves. But with a quick mindset shift of instead of thinking of what you can't do, start focusing on what you can do. Even the small intentional actions will add up. I do it with all my clients. We have an app where we actually track your actions and we get to see of, we get to see your patterns and whoa, on weekends, we really struggle with this. How can we create a plan around that? But then we see what you, you're excelling at this. Can we increase or are we going to be good there? So we can actually visually see what is happening, what is not happening and allows us to really create a good mindset shift around, am I doing what is best for my body in that moment and in the day? So we're going to move into the three pillars of sustainable health and fitness. And pillar one is fitness, pillar two is nutrition, and pillar three is accountability. And mindset falls into all of these. 
So in the past, I've done fitness, nutrition, mindset as my three pillars. And I really wanted to throw in that accountability aspect, especially in September, because there's some cool things that I'm doing and that my clients are doing that I want to share. So our three pillars today and mindset, remember, falls into all of these as fitness, nutrition, and accountability. So when we talk about fitness, and this can mean intentional movement. So you'll hear me say fitness, exercise, and intentional movement interchangeably. And essentially what this means is picking time in your day to move your body intentionally in a way that it needs to be moved. So some days that may mean stretching, some days that may mean strength training, some days that's cardio, some days that's walking, listening to your body, but intentionally moving it in a way that makes it feel good. So often we get caught up in exercise, has to look a certain way. We have to sweat a certain amount. We have to be in our heart rate to a certain amount. We have to work out for at least 30 minutes. Like, yeah, in a perfect world, we would have a, a good pattern of strength and cardio and stretching and doing all those things. But when we're starting out, going full into all of that is not ideal. It's not realistic. It's not sustainable. So we want to make sure that we are focusing on intentional movement and setting a goal of I'm going to do 10 minutes of intentional movement every single day and each day deciding what that type of intentional movement is going to be. Maybe that's a walk. Maybe that's a jog. Maybe that's doing a little AMRAP. Maybe that is using the TRX that you've got hanging up somewhere. Maybe that's outside kicking the soccer ball around with your kids. Something that you don't do on a normal basis. We want to make sure that's what classifies as that intentional movement. And if you're unsure if something classifies, just drop a comment and ask or send me a message. It's, there's no cut and dry. There is some gray area. But just being intentional about moving your body in a way that makes it feel good. And then over time, once we've built that habit and we start to get into the routine of it, we can increase that time and we can start to create more structure around what that intentional movement looks like. Then we get into, okay, we've been moving every day. Can we make sure that at least one of those days is a stretch day? Can we make sure that at least two of those days is a strength day? Can we make sure that we're getting at least a 30 minute walk and we can play around with that, but also giving ourselves permission of if we plan for a 30 minute walk and the day comes and we can only do 10 minutes or we have to break that 30 minute walk up into three 10 minute segments, that's okay as well. We're not all or nothing approach here. We are slowly doing what we can with what we have. That is fitness. I want you to think about fitness, exercise, intentional movement. It's something you get to do, not something you have to do. It should be fun. It should be something that is a mental release, something that's a physical release that makes you feel good after. Yes, it is very hard sometimes to get up and say, I'm going to go outside and walk when you're in a crappy mood, but I can guarantee after you will feel 100% better. So pillar number two is that nutrition aspect and nutrition looks a ton of different ways. And there's so much controversy out there of what diet you should be doing, what you should be having. We boil it down to the basics in this community. We talk about adding more of the things our body needs rather than taking away the things that we can't have or we shouldn't have. We don't talk about that because I truly believe that there is a way to enjoy all of the foods and drinks you like in moderation while still hitting your health and fitness goals. But a lot of that boils down to looking at the basics. Are we getting enough protein? Are we eating vegetables? Are we eating fruits? Are we getting whole grains and fibers? Are we getting those aspects in and thinking about adding more? So for instance, are you getting vegetables? No, add a serving of vegetables. Don't take anything away, but add your serving of vegetables. Eat your serving of vegetables first. Maybe you're having one and add a second egg. It's going to make you feel fuller, more satisfied. Think about adding more because when we fill up on those foods that make us feel really good and that our body enjoys, we can still indulge in those mozzarella sticks or whatever that appetizer may be when you're like, oh, I know I shouldn't have these. Have them. But make sure you're also getting something to complement that, so your body feels fueled and energized and ready to go rather than ugh, gross and ugh. All those nasty feelings that I know we all have felt at some point, and maybe you're still feeling on a regular basis. Think about adding more. For nutrition, I always tell everybody you need to audit yourself 
or have me audit you. Ideally, I have you do a little bit of both if we work together. I do free food log audits. Feel free to drop log in the comments below and I'll reach out and let you know how we do it. So essentially a one week food log because with all the controversy out there, one thing that is always missing is you see something and you just jump into this new diet. You need to really get an idea of how are you currently eating and be fully aware of that before you even start making changes. And when I say we want to add more to your plate, I can't give you guidance on what that next type of food should be until I actually know what you're eating. So a food log is the first number one step that you should do before changing your nutrition. So being aware of that. And there's multiple ways to do it so it's not overwhelming. That third pillar that we're talking about today, remember, mindset when it comes to nutrition, mindset when it comes to fitness. Now we're pulling that mindset into our third pillar, which is accountability. And honestly, <laughs> accountability is where magic happens. And having that support system, whether it's an amazing group, a workout buddy, a partner, a coach such as myself, can make all of the difference. Because yes, we may be strong, independent women, and we can hold ourselves accountable. But at the end of the day, holding ourselves accountable when there's so many other things on that to-do list, we're exhausted. We don't even want to do that some days. So it's nice to have that support system. It can look whatever way it works for you. I always recommend um, telling people to don't get too overzealous. Don't commit to too many people at once because then you're feeling like you're pulled in multiple directions. Find somebody in your life who is working towards the same or similar goals as you. This community is one of them. And share your wins, share your losses, share your struggles, share what you're doing, what your workouts were, what your water was, all of this stuff. Ask questions. Say, hey, I'm doing this. Who else wants to do this? Like, Use that community aspect. But you want to make sure you guys are working towards the same or similar goals. Because if they're working one way this way on their health and you're working another or you're working one way and they're not doing anything, it's gonna be really hard for that accountability partner to hold you accountable, but also you're not gonna feel super great either. So we wanna make sure that accountability group, partner, coach, whatever, isn't a great fit for you. So this month, month of September, I was with my cousin this weekend and we got talking about, um, she has a road bike, I've got my inside spinning bike, and we got talking about doing a spinning or cycling mileage challenge. So her and I, we just said, okay, for the month of September, whoever does the most mileage. I posted that on my personal profile. You might have seen that already, but it's very low key. But to me, it's a little bit of a competition. So I want to make sure that I am being intentional about what my movement looks like and making sure I'm getting bike rides in so I can count that mileage. Doing it super easy and keeping track of it, track of it in my Apple Notes. Um, I'll post some pictures kind of in the group as it goes on. If you have any interest in that, just drop cycle below. You can still start now. Um, inside, outside, whatever your bike is, as long as you track it, that's what matters. In addition to that, I just kicked off a healthy habits challenge for a networking group that I'm a part of. And what it's doing is it's taking other professionals in the community and connecting them with one another through wellness. So the biggest, so we're going to keep each other accountable. We're going to share our wins. We're going to share that we're drinking water. We're going to make sure that we're getting our protein and we're going to share meals, all of that in a community aspect, which is super motivating. It's more motivating to go to a group fitness class or to go to a gym and work out when you see others around you. You tend to push yourself harder. You tend to be a little bit more conscious of, oh, is my form correctly? Whereas when, we, when we're at home, sometimes we're just moving things around and it's great. Movement is movement and I'd rather have you move than not do anything at all. But when you get out around other people, you get a little bit deeper sense of motivation. So all of these challenges are challenges, which means there is an end date to them. But that doesn't mean that when the end date stops, I'm gonna stop doing all these things. No, at the end of that end date or with about a week left, I'm going to have the conversation with people in these communities of how do you want to proceed so that this can continue to stay sustainable. And that's where challenges are kind of like mini goals or mini benchmarks to that big goal. So for instance, if next year you have a goal of, I want to have 52 workouts in the course of the year, that's one workout a week. If that is your goal, how do we break that down into something that is more manageable in a 30 or 60 day period? 
that we are challenged, we are motivated, we are working on those habits and those short-term wins then build into bigger long-term wins. Think about that. So it is September. We're at the start of September right now. You have September, October, November, and December. You still have four months left this year. What are you going to do to start changing your life? Is it going to be fitness related? Is it going to be nutrition related? Is it going to be finally finding that accountability partner? Is it going to mean finally reaching out to somebody and saying, I need extra help and support? Whatever that looks like, commit to what you are going to work on at least for the next 30 days. And if you are thinking, I want to work, I, I need somebody else. I need an accountability partner. I want to know what it's like working with a coach. And if you'd like to work with me, just drop me in the comments below or shoot me a message, whichever you're more comfortable with, and we'll talk. I've got a few cool things coming up towards the end of the year. But as we kind of move into and we continue speaking about support and motivation and accountability, I am super excited to announce something that I have been working on. I've kind of slipped it into a few conversations in the past, but for a while now, I've been working on my own podcast called the Empower Her Wellness Podcast. This podcast is specifically for women. I have this Facebook group I know is called Busy Moms. I'm keeping the podcast more general for women itself. And in this group on the first Thursday of each month, I'm going to start doing a little bit more mom specific, but they're going to co kind of feed each other. And I'm going to tell you why in a little bit, but this, I want this podcast to be a resource for you for all things, women's health, fitness, nutrition, mindset, accountability, pelvic floor, stress, sleep, hormones, and so much more that I can't even list it. Episodes are going to be launched in whatever streaming platform you use for a podcast, the second, third, and fourth Thursday of each month. They'll be live, I believe, by 6 a.m. those Thursdays. Two of those episodes each month are going to be solo shows by me. They're going to be about 20-minute episode, 15 to 20-minute episodes. One of those episodes during the month is I will have a guest on or an expert in pelvic floor or stress or sleep or in something that I know a lot about, but I'm not the expert in, and I want you to learn from them. So if you have certain topics that you want me to talk about, please send them my way or drop them in the comments. I will make sure to get an episode based on that. But so far we've got, um, we have a pelvic floor specialist on, we've got a sleep specialist on, and I'm super excited to kind of get these moving and going. So in the first couple episodes, what you can expect, episode number one is going to kind of be a lowdown of what you can find in these episodes, when you can find them, where you can find them, why I started a little bit more backstory on that. But then the next two episodes, one's going to be about nutrition, and the other one's going to be about shifting from a gap mindset to a gain mindset, which if you have been part of this group for a while, you know I've talked about that quite a bit. And I think it's a super powerful podcast to listen to. I love listening to podcasts when I'm out on a walk or I'm in the car, somewhere where I can actually sit and listen and take in that information. Number one thing that I want you to remember with a podcast, whether you are here in the group getting content from me and wanting to implement and take action and you're all motivated after the training, or you listen to a podcast and you feel that way, remember, you do not have to implement it all. Pick one thing and slowly build on it. The final really cool portion is in the podcast, you're going to hear me talk a lot about of what is your action, go post it in our community and I will hold you accountable. So if you are listening to any of the episodes and you're like, I want to focus on blank, jump into this Facebook community, make a post, say at Morgan, I want to be held accountable to my water, blah, 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 whatever details you want to share, I will hold you accountable to that. I want this group in this community to be the accountability group for all of the action you are going to take based off of what you are learning in the podcast. So kind of like I said earlier, they're going to feed each other. It's important that you are in both so that you can continue to learn and grow. And one of the best things you can do to support the podcast and support me, because I know some a lot of you ask, is making sure to hit subscribe, 
and listen to the content. Send me messages about what type of content you want to see because I'm doing this for you so that you have a place that you feel comfortable going to, that you're getting reliable information, you're hearing from experts that you look forward to listening to. Where I know I've listened to podcasts from people where like certain episodes are great, but the whole thing and all I'm not a huge fan of. So maybe you're somebody who's just going to listen to episodes or maybe you're going to listen to every single episode. All I ask is if you're not a podcast person, try it out. See if you like it. Listen to the few co- first few episodes. Every second, third, and fourth Thursday, a new episode will come out. And the first Thursday of each month, we will be here inside the Facebook group for a training. So before we wrap up, though, because I've got just a few more things to say. If you have any questions that have popped up as I've been talking, whether it's around fitness, nutrition, accountability, that overall mindset, that ultimate guide to success, post them in the comments below. If you're watching the replay, remember, I will come back and I will get to them. But right now, if I don't see any in the comments, not a big deal. I will check them a little bit later and see if you guys have dropped anything. Remember, these replays live on. Finally, Thank you so much for joining today. And remember, all those small intentional actions will add up over time. And keeping track of those. So open your notes section, grab a notebook where you specifically every single day, write down one win for yourself when it comes to your health and wellness journey. And you will see that build and grow. I do this with my clients. I have some of them. They have to send me three at the end of each day because we're reframing our mindset because it's hard to see progress. That mindset comes in in a multitude of ways. So don't forget to be looking out for the podcast going live next Thursday, September 12th. And I will see you all back here next month, the first Thursday of the month at noon Eastern Standard Time. And trust me, you won't want to miss it. Talk to you soon.